happy because of the visit purport. As stated in Chaitanya Chaitanya Madhya 22.54 Sadhu Sangha Sadhu Sangha Sarvaka Sastrakaya Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhihaya Association with devotees is recommended by all the Shastras because by even a moment of such association one can receive the seed for all perfection. In the beginning of his life, Ajamila was certainly very pure and he associated with devotees and brahmanas. Because of that pious activity, even though he was fallen, he was inspired to name his son Narayan. Certainly this was due to good counsel given from within by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 15.15 Sarasya chaham redisam nevishto matasmiti jnama puhanam I am seated in everyone's heart and for me come remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. The Lord who is situated in everyone's heart is so kind that if one has ever rendered service to him, the Lord never forgets him. Thus, the Lord from within gave Ajamila the opportunity to name his youngest son Narayan so that in affection he would constantly call Narayan, Narayan, and thus be saved from the most fearful and dangerous condition at the time of his death. Such is the mercy of Krishna. Guru Krishna Prasadapaya Bhakti Lata Bija. By the mercy of the Guru and Krishna, one receives the seed of bhakti. This association saves a devotee from the greatest fear. In our Krishna consciousness movement, we therefore change a devotee's name to a form that reminds him of Vishnu. If at the time of death the devotee can remember his own name, such as Krishna Das or Govinda Das, he can be saved from the greatest danger. Therefore, the change of names at the time of initiation is essential. The Krishna consciousness movement is so meticulous that it gives one a good opportunity to remember Krishna somehow or other. So Ajamila is repeating very much his past sinful activities mm, as a first thing, and this is actually a duty of a person who has been saved by Krishna, by the devotees, from his sinful material life to regret actually what one has done. And that's a, that's a sign actually of, of gratitude, um, you may say. And if one does not exhibit this um, regret, that means that one doesn't really understand what good fortune one has been granted, what relief and what mercy one has actually received. So, this regret of one's past sinful activities, um, and this is a sign that one actually understands what one has been given. But 
so this we should see if actually um, we do have uh, you can say understood properly actually what kind of mercy that we have been granted and that we always exhibit uh, the proper gratitude for that and that's something that's easy in the beginning because when we come out of the material life so to speak when we're fresh out of the illusory energy having been merged into the illusory energy and madly uh, trying to satisfy our senses somehow or other when we get relief from that dead end uh, you could say process then we feel uh, most of us, we feel some gratitude and some relief. But the problem is that um, that feeling, it may go away, it may uh, be uh, replaced by so many other sentiments. As we know, this world is always flickering. It's always on the move, so to say. And that Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that in this world we have the three modes of material nature and they are competing for dominance. So that means that that feeling of uh, sincere gratitude that may be replaced by some other sentiments, some other feeling. And that's where uh, devotees may experience some difficulty in the process uh, when uh, some other uh, sentiment comes to take the place of that gratitude and that may be caused by many different, uh, uh, many different things or many different situations. And most often is that it's our conditioned nature here, uh, having been in the material world for immemorial, uh, innumerable lives, that um, one tendency we have is that we take things for granted. That's of course is connected with uh, with our desire to be God, because having the concept that we are enjoyer, we think naturally everything should be ready to serve us enjoyment, and we think that naturally this should just this should just be automatically it should be no effort because we are God, so that means that everything should come very easy. We should just enjoy. It. So uh, we expect. Uh, you know, just to be facilitated enjoyment as God, because that's basically the concept, the material concept, which we have cherished, that we should have that experience, just to be served constantly without interruption. So, we can say, we can take it like that, that this <clears throat> concept it leads us to take things for granted, because we want to be enjoyer, we can easily take things for granted, that's the necessary material desire which is ingrained deep within the core of the heart and uh, that leads uh, to taking uh, things for granted and unfortunately we take that into the devotional process when we've been saved by Guru and Krishna unfortunately this uh, programming it sort of like sneaks back in and uh, you can become an enjoyer of taking things for granted uh, in the process of devotional service. And then, that is how that gratitude it gets replaced with some other sentiment. Uh, it gets replaced with uh, a, a negligent and uh, you can say uh, demanding uh, attitude. Like, uh, why is the happiness not always there? You know, I came to Krishna consciousness to be always happy. Why am I not happy? Like that, wanting to be served happiness. But that's actually the material concept. And it is a lack of gratitude, demanding, wanting to, uh, you know, um, having Krishna serve us happiness. That is, uh, that is actually uh, sneaking oneself or the material sentiments, they're coming back again. So when these things happen, then we start as a take the facilities of devotional service for granted and we start to be negligent towards the devotees and that's where the trouble starts when we start to neglect the devotees then that gratitude it will pass in the background and uh, our mind will be filled with undesirable sentiments that, see that, uh, that give us dissatisfaction 
And because the mind is dissatisfied, uh, it becomes agitated. And with the agitated mind, you know, uh, that can lead us anywhere. That can take us any place. So we want to take care that we don't develop a dissatisfied mind. That we don't allow the mind to become dissatisfied. Because that is one of the three items that's very much important in uh, uh, satisfying the Supreme Personality of God. It is mentioned in the Bhagavatam, three things uh, which will satisfy the Supreme Personality of God. And that is uh, M, to be merciful to other living entities, S, to be satisfied, somehow or other, and C, to be uh, controlled, to control one's senses, one's mind and senses from sense gratification. These three things. So, among these three things, being satisfied, that's one of the items. And now the Muni says that by cultivating these three things, that one can very quickly satisfy the Supreme Personality of God at Yonada. So this is actually very important, because in the beginning we feel enlightened, enlightened, and like that everything is fantastic, the devotees, they are all fantastic, and the temple is fantastic, prasadam is fantastic, everything is wonderful and transcendental and, you know, spiritual. But then, uh, maybe that, that is lost, that sentiment is lost along the way. And then we should understand that, uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not the fault of the devotees, it's not the fault of the facility, it's not the fault of Pornitai, it's not the fault of anyone. It is just the material uh, tendencies that are creeping up. And we should know that we have to practice this one thing, to be satisfied. That in order to have that ananda which we are looking for, because we want ananda, this ananda mahabhyasa, we are searching for eternal human and happiness, then the basis of that is satisfaction, that we are satisfied. That we don't allow the mind to develop dissatisfaction. And, um, so we have to take it as an exercise. If our mind is prone to become dissatisfied, if it goes, uh, if it's, uh, we may say, we may even take an example, like the, the record, the LP, so the LP record, if you don't know a bit more of these things, vinyl records, sometimes they develop a small, uh, 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 you can say, cut or grove in the, in the track. And uh, that means that the song would not progress, it would just go, the needle would go into this, uh, this uh, you can say, uh, this cut in the record. So that way, our mind may be go towards, you know, one point, you know, uh, be uh, prone to go to dissatisfaction in that way, over and over, repeatedly, again and again. So if that's the case, then we can observe that our, we have a tendency, that our mind has a tendency to become dissatisfied, it easily becomes dissatisfied then uh, we have to work uh, in a way to keep that mind satisfied at all times. How do we keep our mind in a satisfied condition? Because if our mind is satisfied, then we'll be able to perceive Krishna, and we'll be able to serve Krishna. But if the mind is dissatisfied, that's the only thing we'll see, we'll see the dissatisfied mind. And that ultimately will lead to heaven. So seeing the dissatisfied mind, which is we don't want to see that. That's a sight we don't want to see. We want to just uh, that the mind is satisfied. Because this is one of the three items necessary and essential uh, for satisfying the Supreme Personality of God. To be merciful to other living entities, to be satisfied some or other, and to control the mind, uh, and, mind and sense from sense gratification. These three things, MSC. Um, so this is the first thing that uh, Arjuna he uh, expresses, and then he expresses gratitude. He mentions that because of my previous spiritual activities, I could see those four exalted personalities who came to rescue me. Now I feel exceedingly happy because of their visit. So he's ex expressing his gratitude, and uh, we should also um, 
make it a point to be happy about the devotees. Like we should generate some uh, sense of affection for the devotees. And uh, we may ask ourselves, uh, how do we be really, uh, become really affectionate and attached to the devotees? Now what is it that leads to uh, a feeling or a sense of love, you can say, an attachment between the devotees? That's a very important question actually. And well, if we study the Bhagavad Gita, as we know, the Bhagavad Gita has four very important verses. In the middle, towards the middle of the Bhagavad Gita, there's in the tenth chapter, there is uh, Chatur Shloki, which is from 10.8 uh, till 10.11. And the first verse, 10.8, it starts with Krishna presenting himself. He says, I am the Supreme Personality of God, the source of all, of everything, all spiritual and material world. Everything emanates from me. So he presents himself. And he says, because, uh, uh, he says that, that I am the Lord, the wise, uh, the wise people, they worship me uh, with all their hearts. And then he goes on to the next verse. Uh, then he immediately gives the process, he immediately gives the activity, what should be done. He says, Matchita matgata prana, bodhayanta parasparam, katayanta chamamita tushanti chadamantita. That means um, the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me, their lives are dedicated to my service. And they derive great bliss and satisfaction by always conversing about me and enlightening one another. So the devotees derive great bliss and satisfaction by always conversing about Krishna and enlightening one another. So this is actually a very, very important clue of how one becomes attached to the devotees. Because we have to see here, um, what's our proper relationship? What's actually some interest? Because some self-interest is, self -interest is also required. Self-interest is a sign of intelligence. So what is our self-interest on the ultimate spiritual level with the other devotees? And actually, the whole clue is given in this verse. Bodhayanta parasparam katayam chas tamam tam. Bodhayanta, enlightening one another, katayam chas, katayam chas, conversing, kata, conversing about me, they derive tushanti cha ramanti cha, uh, tushanti satisfaction and ramanti, great bliss. So we want to have satisfaction and we want to have bliss and we should know that the devotees, they are the uh, source of that. They are necessary elements. They are necessary for us to be satisfied and to have bliss. Actually, we find we cannot avoid uh, the fact that the devotees they are the source of our satisfaction and bliss. We need the devotees in order to be satisfied and blissful. So how do we get that satisfaction and bliss in the association of devotees? That we get by speaking about Krishna and by enlightening uh, each other uh, in the science of Krishna consciousness. So when we take that from each other, then we can understand the value, the real value of the devotees. But unless we understand this, unless we get this, then uh, bias you may come in and these devotees, uh, really maybe you can manage without them. Or maybe you can find some better situation or do something else uh, uh, like that. There must be some... Uh, she might come in all kinds of proposals of things you could do better or do differently. If we don't value, if we can't find any value of the devotees we have around us, we can't uh, uh, really properly estimate the uh, importance to us, then why does she may uh, come in with uh, a proposal that we may accept and which may lead us uh, 
to a, a much more unfortunate situation. So our first duty should be to try to realize the value of the devotees, uh, the importance of the devotees to our own progress, to our own satisfaction and our own search, pursuit of happiness, real, real happiness. Um, so therefore this verse 10.9 is actually to be contemplated very deeply and uh, try to see if uh, we can find that uh, satisfaction with in the social of devotees. Um, and then in the next, that was the 10 9, uh, ninth verse of the 10th chapter. Then he goes on, Krishna, he goes on uh, to say to those uh, constantly devoted to serving with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Someone who have been, become enlivened in the association of devotees, when you have got the basic point, like we've got the basics of not being ungrateful, not being neglectful, that lesson has been learned. And when we engage uh, constantly uh, in the service of the Lord, then the Lord will uh, be obliged, He will feel obliged to give us the understanding by which we can derive the ultimate success. By knowing Him in truth and going back to the spiritual world at the end of our lives, so, uh, and he helps, we can go on to the, to the next verse, to the 11th verse. He says how that is brought about, how the Lord is also there with us in the process. He says, uh, He says, with the lamp of knowledge, from within the heart, I destroy the darkness born of ignorance. So there we have it, in this chapter, Shoki, we find that the devotees, and the Lord, they are the uh, ones that help us out of our material condition. They help us out of our material consciousness. And we should understand how to take their help, how to scientifically and with full conviction, how to take their help and be greedy for it. Because when you get the greed for it, then it goes fast. But if we don't know, if we're in the, so to say, uh, confusion, then uh, it doesn't go very fast. No, we have to get the conviction and determination. That's required. Because Krishna, he says, also in the seventh chapter, he says, Yesam tantakata pavakam jananam punyakamaram te bhanga mohani mutam Bajantimam vithavata that last line, he says, and that means that uh, with determination, and the whole verse, it, uh, 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 it translates to those who have acted piously in this life, as Arjuna, he had acted piously, he stays piously in this life, um, in his beginning, in the beginning, he had acted piously in this life and in previous lives and whose sinful activities are completely eradicated. And then we end, they take to my devotional service with determination. So, from that we understand that this determination is required. In order to uh, achieve success, the ultimate success, uh, uh, determination uh, is absolutely required. So, in order to be determined, we need to have the proper, uh, uh, we need to be convinced of our proper direction. And we can take one example. This is, uh, I've been given this uh, several times uh, by my uh, revered spiritual master. And um, he made the example of Arjuna and the, Pan the Pandava brothers. They were, in a day, they were being trained, uh, trained uh, by Dronacharya. And they were all shooting with the bow and arrow. And uh, Donachara, he had put this uh, target on the top of a, on the branch of a tree. He had put the target there. What it may have been, uh, some small target, some piece of fruit or uh, apple or what, uh, I can't remember exactly uh, the, uh, what the target was. But some small, difficult target to hit. And he had 
bird. Huh? Was a bird. It was a bird. Thank you. Yeah, it's a bird. <laughs> and uh, first of all, uh, uh, the first one to come up, uh, first Panama brother came up. That I, I can't remember the order of the Panama brothers, but uh, they came up one after one. And we may say that he asked one of them, like say he asked Yudhisthira, what do you see? He was aiming his arrow, he was stretching the ball, and uh, uh, so he was asked by Dronacharya, what do you see? And then he would reply, well I see the sky, I see the tree, uh, like that, and I see the bird. Uh, and then Dronacharya would say, well put your, put your uh, bow and arrow down. And the next one, uh, would come and uh, would uh, uh, aim the uh, arrow, stretch the bow, aim the arrow and ask the same question and would also reply, well I see the, uh, I see the bird and I see the branch and so on so and Dronachai would again say, then uh, you, uh, you can lower uh, your bow, you know, you're not, you're not ready to shoot yet. But when the turn came for Arjuna, then uh, he stretched uh, the ball and aimed the arrow and Dronacharya asked him, what do you see? And he replied, I see the eye of the bird and I see uh, nothing else. And then uh, Dronacharya would say, shoot. And then he would shoot and he would hit the bird. With it. And uh, the lesson, uh, the lesson from this is that in order for us to hit the target, we need to have one direction. The aim has to be uh, exactly to the point, and we have to have force. And uh, then the arrow will go and hit the target. And we can say if the aim is not proper. We don't have a correct, uh, you say, uh, aim to the target. We'll be uh, reluctant to put force because if we don't know, if we're not convinced exactly here, this like this we do it. This is the proper way. This is exactly how we do it. If we don't have this conviction, we'll not be able to put force. And then, if we can't put force and we don't have direction, we will not hit the target. So. Um, uh, Therefore, this uh, determination, this will only come when we completely convince exactly how the process of devotional service works. We have realized what Krishna says in these four verses, this chapter is working. We've been deeply delved in it and we know how the essence of how this process is executed. Then we're able to put determination in engaging in the process. So that's why these four verses, chapter is working, they're so essential. This is the beginning thing we need to study these four verses. So this is the four verses that we should know very well by heart. And we should preach these verses to, uh, to new ones. That they will be able to easily get the essence of Krishna consciousness. So these four verses, we should spend some time with them. And really learn them very well by heart. And that we can simply, on the basis of these four verses, we can explain the whole essence of Krishna consciousness. So if we start anyway to study the scriptures, these four verses, they're, they're actually the best place to start. Um, so, um, this was some points of how um, we can actually keep a satisfied mind. We can always be grateful and we mentioned some items necessary in order to, uh, uh, in order to uh, stay in a satisfied condition and properly execute uh, Krishna consciousness. And uh, the purport itself, it also has one very interesting point which I thought to speak of.